It's time to speculate on a whole new universe with some new characters. Let's get into it. Holy smokes, we got a true first today, and we're talking about Atlas Comics. We have already discussed Atlas Comics in length, Jeff. Check out our video touching on this already with the, the rights being purchased and possibly going to Paramount for a whole new universe phase to be created. That's right. Atlas started out in the 70s as a direct competition to Marvel and DC, but it was short-lived. A little over a year, but they produced a handful of comic books. And now that we are seeing rights shift, we have people who are very hungry to get into this game. We have media productions that want to compete with Marvel. And after Endgame, it's no surprise, we have potential characters that are going to hit the screen. So hit the subscribe button because we're going to cover some of these characters and their true first appearances. Yo, before we get too deep, I have to give a shout out to Topher at CBSI, comicbookinvest.com, for this true first list of Atlas characters. That's right. We got a lot of members in the community tagging us, letting us know that they're finding Atlas in dollar bins across the country. These books are out there. Some of them are worth money. Others are attainable. Let's take a look at this awesome list because we have some characters that are a little bit more of a chance to go to the big screen. I think the odds are a bit better than some, and it's because of what happened in 2010. We dove in. We, we did some research. We read some titles. I read probably about five or six different titles here of Atlas just to really get into it. I read the 70s, and I read one or two of the relaunch in 2010 that they had, and there is a chance for some of these that are kind of interesting, so I do think there's always hope, so we'll just see what, what happens here. Hope's a good word because part of us dissecting what happened in the 70s made us look at what comics came out in 2010 when we saw a revised version of the characters for another really short-lived time. Now, you took a look at Phoenix issue number zero and one. It was really interesting. I found it really intriguing and I actually enjoyed the read. So I really do think that there's a place for them to go with this. This, is, this gets into a character. Actually, a town. It starts off with a whole town. And then all of a sudden, uh, this big boom happens in the sky. And when they all wake up, like three to four of them are found out and found to be in like a cell-like environment in some crazy suit. That's right. They were abducted by aliens. This is a like superhero slash sci-fi comic book. And what's interesting is that a lot of these comics that came out in the 1970s, they're tip, a lot of them are one- at most four issues, and throughout the run, they were figuring out what they were going to become, potentially long-term, but it wouldn't play out that way. And what we have here is uh, what I think is something that is so unique that it actually could fit very well amongst its competition right now. So let's take a look at the Phoenix. This actually came out in again, in 1975, and we have Phoenix issue number one, 9.8s going for $90 right now, and we have only a low 20 issues that are currently graded at 9.8 on the census. Now, I believe this number will grow as exposure grows for these books. So as we go through this list, they're starting off low right now, but be ready to see some explosions. So you, you guys out there, get ready to speculate and really try to acquire these sooner than later. But the Phoenix, as I was saying earlier, does sound interesting. You know what? why I feel like there's hope for this franchise is because they're building a universe where there are no heroes yet. Right. So it's like every new hero is building potentially on another hero, and this world is maybe being introduced to characters. I could just see a lot of things going if they can just get it right. Issue number three shows an appearance of the Dark Avenger, who only has his appearance here in this issue. Again, all these characters... They were only appeared one, four times at the most, and the ones within the stories even less. So look out for issue three in this really affordable run. Now, another one that's worth taking a look at that also was part of that 2010 lineup was Iron Jaw. You had a chance of taking a read. I read the 70s version one. I didn't read the updated one, so maybe it's better. But the 70s one was a tough read, and I just did not enjoy it whatsoever. It's a dystopian future where we have a character who is, it's a kill or be killed type of situation. He's not the typical hero, but again, they're trying to do something different. And this is something that interests me. I like different. I like that we're not just seeing a traditional superhero 
uh, radiation causes them superpowers types of stories. This takes place in the future, and this is also a character that was created to kind of go in competition with Conan the Barbarian, which is another character that has been underutilized in the Marvel MCU, especially in the MCU because he's not in the MCU, but it's another character that hasn't been utilized in Marvel Comics nearly as much, let alone the MCU at all. And we have 9.8 copies hitting right around $150 and only a mere 11 copies currently on the census. Yeah, again, these books are out here, guys. So... I think it's really early and you got to dive in and just dive in, in in a reasonable manner. One to five bucks. I mean, like what other potential books that can grow can you really spend that money on anymore? That's right. Another one to keep an eye out for is Grim Ghost number one. This is the first appearance of Grim Ghost. And this is about a 1700s person who gets hanged and makes a deal with Satan. And he is resurrected in the 20th century. It's very dark, but you're going to see a lot of these comics were a bit more mature in nature. There's some surprisingly adult subjects in these, and I am interested in a more mature type of superhero movie. Yeah, I really felt that every issue I read was pretty violent at some point. Somebody pretty much ended up dying in some violent manner, and then there had to be some type of redemption for that hero character to grow. So that was a consistent thing I saw. This one is interesting because when I read it, again, like you mentioned, 1700s, highwaymen robbing people. Um, he got hung and they made a deal with Satan to come back. But the deal was that he has to um, bring souls to Satan of just evil people. And that's just what he does. And he's still dressed in kind of the 1700s highwayman character. All in one book. Like there's so much story here. I'm excited to find out more and to think, we haven't gotten anything uh, since 2010. And even then, it was so short-lived that there still is an open slate for this character. And it looks really cool, too. Yeah, there's definitely, again, uh, potential, man. I love that word for this video. So much potential, especially for this book that a 9.8 goes for $300. Yeah, you're right, because 57 of these books have been graded, and five of them are 9.8s. So we're going to start learning as the trend goes here that Certain books are separating themselves from the pack. This is clear. I mean, this is way more money than the other ones. Yeah, it's almost double on some of these others. And we're going to start seeing what truly is harder to find over others. Now, this next one, Tiger Man number one. This is kind of a weird story, but it's also kind of dark. Yeah, it was very dark. I thought it was going to be a silly story. And it kind of is, you know, you have someone who's in Africa. He like separates like the correct chromosome from a tiger and he injects it in himself and does some self testing and becomes kind of like these tiger abilities. Okay. And before he leaves um, the country, he's given like some type of tiger garment and a mask to almost maybe help bring out the inner tiger in him. And so when you hear that, you're like, what? Yeah. What's going on here? But as you read on the story, you're like, you know, he's pulling it off. Now, can it be portrayed on a screen properly without being like overly animated or silly. I don't know if that's possible. Comes home and his uh, sister's dead. Ugh, man, his sister was murdered. Murder. Again, it's these are all pretty dark and violent, it feels like, for the most part. That's why I mention it. And what's interesting is Tiger Man number one, this is definitely a more attainable book, but it's pretty cheap. And his first appearance isn't in Tiger Man number one. Well, Tiger Man's first appearance, and according to C's you see on the label, it says that it's in Tiger Man number one. And this is an attainable book. But his true first appearance wasn't in Tiger Man number one. It was in Thrilling Adventure Stories issue number one. There was only a handful of magazines that Atlas produced alongside of these comic books. This was one of them. It predates Tiger number one, and it's the first full appearance. The book is valued at $250 plus, but nine eights? Oh my goodness, under three that are currently listed on the census. Rolling with what you mentioned on magazines, there is another magazine with the first appearance of a character called Devilina. And so I went through my boxes and I happened to find one that I had. And it's really actually supposedly not that easy to find. Yeah, they actually are priced on eBay for like mid to high grade between 60 to 100 plus dollars. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the full story, but it's basically about Satan's sister. And so I'll have to really dive deep into it and check it out. But that's another one you should be looking for because in high grade, it's apparently kind of tough to find. 
That's right. And this is technically the only real female lead that Atlas produced in the short time they were making comics. And it happened here in this book. And you mentioned it, that you had this and you didn't even know that this was a minor key. It's worth money. There aren't a whole lot of sales online, but it's these kind of books that are out there and you got to familiarize yourself with them because this is a magazine. Yeah. And let's put something into perspective. When we say tough, it's all going to be relative to the issues that are in that publisher's line in, in relation to other books too. So when we say tough, we're not talking like golden age, 10 copies out there. Okay. This is all relative to seventies and eighties publication sizes. So an existence of them surviving how they were stored. Yeah. This is prime for hunting. It's tough because they're still in boxes that no one knows about, but there's another handful of books that deserve some recognition because they are out there. They're affordable and they're just different. They're different. And I like different. Let's take a look at the brute here. We mentioned this in our last video that this was created to kind of go up against the incredible Hulk, but this is a little bit of a different story. Yeah. I mean, we basically have a Neanderthal who was frozen in ice and gets thawed out. And that's basically the beginning of this character's story and his birth. It's a little silly, but it could be fun. Yeah, and again, it's up for interpretation, and that was in the 70s version, and they can always update any of these. That's right. I mean, 42 copies have been graded, a mere eight that are listed at 9.8, and we're seeing a fair market, market value of $120 for this book. Another book that's worth mentioning is The Scorpion. This one has some big names attached to it. Yeah, I mean, it had uh, Chaikin as the artist in the first two issues, and they went one direction with this character, and supposedly people really enjoyed that, but unfortunately that information didn't get back to the publishers in time before they decided to switch it to some other superhero standard-looking character. That's right. By issue three, this character would look completely different. It would go from a more sci-fi mystery type of book to a superhero book really quick. And then it would just cease being made. But The Scorpion, issues one and two, there was a strong fandom that was emerging. And I think had they waited on feedback, this would have been probably their frontline character. Absolutely, because this character would have had some success as he was revived again in a different publisher by Chaikin. And it was a long run called American Flag because it was had a huge resemblance with him. I agree. And we have one more comic book that we have to mention, because if you're on the hunt, this one is one of those finds that you're going to be super excited about because it stands out and no one knows about it. We have the very, very low printed copy of Vicky number four. Wait, what? Vicky number four? What's that? Well, Vicky was reprinted comic books from the past. Yeah, they reprinted issues of Tippy Teen from Tower Comics. So this is issue four, and this was already a failing publisher. So issue four is the last issue. So I can't imagine they were trying to push out a larger print run than number one. Plus being teen humor and for that type of audience, it probably got tossed out. That's right. Not a whole lot of people looking for it. But if you find this issue, you're going to be so surprised to see that it gets priced online for 50 bucks starting. And high grades of these issues with Atlas coming back on the scene right now, who knows where a book like this can end up. Comic fam, you are going to have to hit that subscribe and like button because we are going to start with some Ditko and his tie-in to Atlas. Oh, that's right. We got more videos to discuss. This Atlas well is pretty deep. And when we're bringing Ditko in the mix, you know you're going to want to be around. So thank you so much to comicbookinvest.com, CBSI, Topher, the awesome journalist, writer, volunteer who puts together such awesome content every week for the comic book community. We do appreciate your time. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Thanks so much for watching the video. We are currently taking enrollment for the June Mystery Mail Call. Last month was a banger. This month, it is crazy. Everything's on fire. My house is burning down. Hit the link in the bio to join the community.